broadcasting furry truth and hot dish recipes from a small comics box in secret. This is Furry Frequencies, your favorite furries at the highest frequency. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Furry Frequencies this week with your host, Silox. Hello, how's it going? And also myself, Lifty. So, um, to kick things off, we do have uh, some bit of news regarding the uh, COVID and the convention front, and we're going to be talking about this tonight. Um, while a lot of conventions are actually looking at plans to scale back or cancel their events for 2021, one has already made an announcement that says, well, along with Anthrocon, they made an announcement that they are tentatively giving the green light to their event. And uh, by the way, if you want to join in the conversation, of course, the conversation is still going on on our Twitter feed at Furry Frequency. Go ahead and give us a follow and uh, like some of our tweets, uh, uh, engage with some of our tweets, uh, comment. Uh, sometimes, we, you know, we read comments. Sometimes we read DMs. And uh, sometimes we reply back. Uh, you never know. Uh, but also, like, comment, and subscribe to our videos on YouTube because that's also the best way that you can get notified on how you can watch our newest episodes you can just hit that bell for notifications and you get a little notification bell when our uh when our new episodes drop so anyway back to the story at hand so the the first convention to have made an announcement in 2021 that they will be moving forward with their event is of course megaplex based in florida and uh, if you know anything about Florida, you will also know that uh, Florida has been, I think, one of the first few states to relax coronavirus restrictions in America. They actually started last year. Um, I broke the news to Silox uh, one time, and um, and we were kind of discussing about uh, the rep the repercussions of it. I don't remember exactly when Florida lifted their coronavirus rest restrictions but mm -hmm. uh sorry i just kind of slurred a little bit there uh but they have and uh now this means that megaplex really has nothing holding them back from hosting megaplex now they can host a smaller event but there's really nothing holding them back from actually hosting the event like i was mentioning in a prior podcast uh you know this is this is where we're you know we're trying to see what direction Megaplex is going. And yeah. um and unfortunately, this announcement that they have made on their Twitter has uh brought back a great deal of outrage towards Megaplex. And so we're gonna be discussing that this uh for this week's podcast. So let's just start by reading the update that they posted. March the 1st, 2021, and it says, Greetings! As you all have been aware, Megaplex 2021 registration has been on hold. While we do not know what the state of the world will be in regards to the COVID-19 come August, uh, this is, this is by the way, this is word for word, by the way, so if it, there's any, any uh, grammatical issues, that's, uh, I'm reading it verbatim, so don't look at me. It's verbatim. So uh, while we do not know what the state of the world will be in regards to the COVID-19 come August, we are remaining optimistic that we will be able to hold Megaplex 2021. We are working with the hotel as well as local public safety and health officials to ensure the safety of our attendees. That being said, we are pleased to announce that registration will be opening on May 1st, 2021 at noon Eastern Time and the room block we expect to be available on May 10th, 2021 at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, but we are still working to confirm this with the hotel. Should the date change, we will let everyone know via we are, we are our website and social media. 
To make sure we are prepared for our attendees, we will be moving to a pre-reg only model. This will allow us to handle registration and badge pickup much more safely and efficiently and allow us to plan for attendance numbers better. As a result, registration for the in-person event will close on or before, depending on how many people we can safely have in the convention space, July 12th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we're just going to cut it off there. There's there's quite a lot more on their uh, on their Twitter it's uh, at MegaplexCon. If you want to read this, we're going to be also sharing it on our social media um, so that you can be informed. But um, yeah, reading through the comments of this, a uh, lot of people are just not happy with this. A lot of people are not, are, are thinking that this is not a good move. Silox, what do you think? Let's go ahead and open um, with you. Well, I think Megaplex is just doing their due diligence, due diligence with this by announcing their intentions to um, have a convention for this year. And mm-hmm. had they not, they likely would have been in breach of contract, and they could have been very well sued by the venue that they are scheduled to host the convention in. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I agree. Um a lot of people don't really quite take into account uh, what kinds of contracts that conventions actually get themselves into when they decide they want to hold an event and hold an event in this space. They sometimes have multi-year contracts that they take out. Uh, I think we've talked about multi-year contracts before. And uh, mm-hmm. while... COVID-19 probably created some exemptions in 2020. What we're seeing now in 2021 is an improvement in the COVID-19 fight with the number of vaccines up to three. And um, how many states do we have that lifted COVID-19 restrictions? Let me see. Uh, Number... So let me see. With no mass mandate... um, Let me see. AARP states, uh, 34 states plus D.C. and Puerto Rico mandate face coverings in public. Um, And Florida is not one of them, of course. But uh, this list is the list of uh, states that actually still mandate masks in uh, in public and also have uh, restrictions on how many people can be in a business or in a restaurant at any time is also growing. Um, I know Utah, I think, has mentioned that they will lift their coronavirus restrictions soon. Um, Alabama will lift their restrictions in April. Um, uh, let me see. Connecticut, I think, lifted their their restrictions. AARP says they did or they didn't. Um, So, so this is a, an ongoing issue, but, um, but a lot of people are still mad because, uh, people are looking at Megaplex. Megaplex is also, you know, one of the largest events on the East coast for furry events. And, uh, and of course people are just like, just destroying Megaplex on Twitter about it. Um, a lot of people are not liking this, but at the at, at the same time, Megaplex is a large event and it's hosted in a very large convention center, and they probably have a multi year contract. Now, like you said, Silox, they probably would have to face a very steep uh, penalty from the from the venue itself if they decide you know we can't host this event and and the uh mm-hmm. and the the venue is going to be asking well why now get get now get this they are in florida so they're going to look at this and say well you there are no covid restrictions there's no mask mandate there's no social distancing requirements there's no uh gathering limits nothing no not none, none, none of that what is your reason for 
for canceling. And, you know, given that, you know, they can't fall back on COVID-19 to cancel, they have no reason. So it's either they go ahead with the event, even a smaller event, or they fess up and say, well, you know, we're canceling for no reason. That's not a good position to put Megaplex in. As many, as much as these people are saying, no, 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 this is a terrible idea. You're being terrible. How many people have to die? Blah, 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 blah. No, you got to think about it like, like that. What reasoning does Megaplex have anymore to cancel the event? They have none. And uh, as, their, as their statements said, they're, uh, they're still trying to finalize things with the, with the venue. So things can change, but at the same time, the venue is going to be looking at them and saying, well, you know, you have a contract and you have signed on the dotted line saying that you will fulfill the terms of the contract. So given that there's nothing holding you back, we expect you to fulfill your contract at this date and time. Uh, Yes, but I think that the people who run Megaplex know that it would be a massive public relations disaster if they went ahead and held this convention this year. I get that. And so However, they might they might have money stored up to where they can say, okay, we're not do gonna do that and we'll take a year off. Well, they took a year off last year though. Yes, and I don't think they were charged last year because of extreme. Were they or were work. they not? I don't know. I, I don't know if they were charged. I would strongly doubt it. I mean, it, well, it, I you strongly doubt it, but at the same time, you know, these are contracts. Yes. Of course, yes, when the when the contract was signed, nobody probably predicted that a pandemic would rage across the United States and make people sick and die. They didn't, but however, contracts usually have how, out clauses and clauses that I don't believe that when this contract was signed, I don't believe they had an out clause for COVID-19 because back then probably COVID-19 wasn't even a thing. Nobody knew that a pandemic would rage across the United States. So there's nothing that they could have predicted to out clause out of. Well, not for COVID-19, but for something else, extenuating circumstances, a natural disaster, a natural disaster. They're in Florida. What hits Florida all the time during that time of the year? Hurricanes. Well, mm-hmm. well, it's conceivable to think using that clause. They have an out clause for hurricanes, yes, but not for COVID nineteen. I think COVID nineteen is is uh, contingent upon state and local guidelines. And when those when the state just says, "Okay, we're lifting everything," then those guidelines are gone. Yeah, so my thing is though, they probably have they probably could say that, okay, you know what? We don't feel comfortable hosting this despite what the state says, and we'll throw a bunch of money at it for this year and then continue next year. They could conceivably say that. And it wouldn't be out of the realm for them to do that, honestly. They can they can say that, but the venue's going to bite back and say, no. That's not a good enough reason for for canceling the event. We're going to charge you. They, they, we, could, we, they, they probably could have gone easy on them in 2020 because everybody was suffering in 2020. But in 2021, when things are getting better, they're going to be looking at them and saying, well, what's your excuse? And if they say that, that's not a good enough excuse. I think that Megaplex would be smart to look at this from all angles and realize it probably isn't worth it to host. I and think, I think we'll what they're doing right now pay I think to get out of the contract. Yeah. I think what they're doing right now is the smart move. Um, I think that they they don't if they have a plan to cancel the event closer to the event date. They don't want to announce their plans too soon and then catch the ire of the event venue because then they're going to they're going to start asking some very very uncomfortable questions and then just kind of put the squeeze on them to either host the event or 
pay all the contracts that they have to cancel and break. They're they're going to put a squeeze on them. Um, I want to share this tweet mm-hmm. that uh, Gail Frostbane she uh, she tweeted. Um, she she tweeted in response to Megaplex. Uh, she said, "Friendly reminder that cons are going to be in the worst legal and financial situations of their lifetimes this summer and fall as states and cities call to open up and their contracts put them in the worst spot." We are going to see cons die forever because of this. Just keep this in mind before lashing out. Try to think rationally, not reactionary. Continue to be smart and safe and only do things that feel safe to you. We still have a lot of storm to weather. Wear your masks, wash your hands, get vaccinated, and be kind. Now, I do agree with Gail here. I really do. And I I, I do feel for what she's saying in, the, in these tweets. Um, that is the reality of the situation conventions are still trying to weather the storm from 2020 and they really can't afford to call out 2021 again just like they did with 2020 they just can't afford to do that and with so many states deciding to lift their restrictions basically giving them no cover for covid-19 they're in a bind they have to either post or pay for a canceled event. And a lot of these events, they don't have the capital to just cancel it. They're basically they're basically declaring bankruptcy if they cancel in 2021 for many of events. And I'm sure Megaplex is one of them. Um, well, we don't know the fight. We want to make that clear. None of us here know the financial um, uh the financial yeah, we, we're, we're not privy to Megaplex. Megaplex's finances. We're just kind of like, you know, spitballing here. So I think if they do have the money, they'll just go ahead and write this year off and then come back and do it again in 2022. But I at mean, the same time, uh, these these large events, they, they cost a lot of money and they do depend on people's um, attendance. They do. They do. Uh, they do depend on people's um, uh, ticket sales. They for do them to actually generate enough money so that they can pay for all these contracts. And if people just want to ask, you know, to transfer their their membership from one year to another, that costs them money. They have to. They, they can't just. They can't just do that without actually expecting money to flow in the next year from other people. The money has to come from somewhere. So let, let's, for this argument, say that they go ahead and host. Um, do you think a lot of people would show up that close? Because the way I well, see it is, from what we've seen with these comments, a lot of people say, yeah, that's cool if you host it, but I don't feel safe showing up. So, so what I, do you think? Well, what I've said before, and I'll say it again for posterity's sake, is that nobody, and I mean nobody, has a crystal ball that they can see into and see what our nation is going to be like in August or September or whenever. So, and I've said before that they have to worry the most about what the state is going to say about COVID-19. And uh, that's the that's the one thing that the hotel or the venue is going to be looking at. They're not they're they don't see the venue doesn't doesn't listen into these uh, board meetings for all of these conventions. They have a liaison that can t- with the convention and the convention talks back to the liaison but they don't they don't listen to what's going on in these boardroom meetings they're not they don't have a voice in these boardroom meetings they're just mm-hmm. they're just looking for um, uh, an exchange here and so they're not listening to the concerns of the convention staff they're listening to the concerns of the state and the local government because they have to be they have to hold accountable to or they have to they have to abide by the state. They have to abide by state and local guidelines. They do. If if the state 
and local guidelines say otherwise, then they have to abide by the state and local guidelines. And right now what I'm seeing is that Florida is doesn't have state and local guidelines for COVID-19. So this convention can't use COVID-19 as a fallback for them canceling and breaking all of these contracts. And, um, and unfortunately, Gail, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, you're talking to a community that is very well known for being irrational and also being very reactionary. And what we're seeing with all of these all of these announcements, and even the the very fact that you have to say that, means that that's what our that's what our community is right now, being very irrational and being very reactionary to a tentative announcement that they will move on as promised until otherwise. Now, I'm not here to say that COVID is going to go away. I'm not here to say that by August, you know, COVID's going to be nothing, you know, COVID's nothing, COVID's gone, and we're, we'll all be back to normal. But I'm being optimistic. I'm being an optimist. And I'm saying that it'll probably be good enough that we'll be able to go back to conventions and that we'll be able to see our friends. Maybe we'll still have to wear masks. Maybe we'll still have to social distance, but I'm feeling confident that we'll still be able to resume our normal life pre-COVID or as much of it as possible pre-COVID and, you know, still be able to go to conventions. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all these, all these negative responses and I'm like, am I the only optimist here? Really? But again, you, you. But again, you didn't answer what I said. I, 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 I asked, "What if cons happen again and Megaplex is happening? How many people do you think will go there?" And I'm of the belief that, based on what these comments say, people aren't going to feel safe going to events, even if we have herd immunity, because there's still that linger w- lingering worry that. Okay, we don't know if people who are there are even vaccinated or not. I mean, I can I can venture a guess and say between five hundred and a thousand. Then Megaplex I don't, would lose money that convention, and it would at, at that point you'd be it's saying it's better well, than nothing. It's better than nothing. It's better than zero. Yes, it's better than what they've been doing. But you'd still be in that position of well, we still lost money for the year. We can't we're in dire financial straits. So at that point, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. No. It, at this point, you're in a position of, well, we're in financial straits, but we're in less financial straits than if we canceled, which, you know, if they canceled again, they'd be in more di- dire straits. Like, how, how can you tell me that canceling is better for the convention financially than actually holding a smaller event? I can't, but what I can say is that a lot of they they ha- they're going to have to weigh a lot of a lot of stuff before they make that final decision, and I don't think there will be a lot of people who will be going to Megaplex if it happens because there are people who are afraid and rightfully so of okay if I go to this how do I know. I'm not potentially putting myself at risk because I don't know who has COVID, who doesn't. Also, is this con going to be enforcing social distancing? Will they have hand sanitizers, thermometers? Is mask wearing going to be um, mandatory in con space? This is all that they have to figure out, R- regardless of what Florida in the in the con- in the, um, the venue says. They have to figure that out as well. Because attendee safety also is important because God forbid something happens and someone catches COVID and brings it back to their family and someone dies from it. Because now the con is looked at as, okay, because you had this convention, you are, you may not be negligent in that person's death, but you are at worst an indirect contributor to it. And that's a PR disaster. Not only for that con, but for furry cons in general. So a lot has to be 
thought out of. It can't just be simply, oh, well, you know what? Florida opened up herd immunity. Let's have a con again. It's not that simple. And I think a lot of people, when they look at this, are saying to themselves, yeah, that's fun, but but I don't trust other people to be safe. I don't trust that the environment is going to be safe enough for me to comfortably go down there and not potentially bring something back to a family member who is vulnerable, could catch COVID and die. And I think a lot okay. of people are thinking that. So um, you mentioned about requirements, uh, you know, what requirements they might require for this event. And it does say, or they do allude to it in their statement here at the very bottom, says COVID-19 has and will continue to change how furry and other fandom-based events will be run for years to come. You should expect to see some of the programming changed or replaced, events only allowing online pre-registration, mask requirements, and attendance caps. While we hope that we will eventually be able to bring you the Megaplex all of you have come to love, know that our attendees' health and safety come first, and we will do what is needed to best ensure that. So that doesn't quite rule out cancellation. I get that. Um, they did also mention that they will try to integrate uh, online interactive components from the Megaplex uh, experience to the uh, into the con so that people who don't want to attend or can't attend can also still kind of join into the festivities from the comfort of their own home. But um, but let me just let me just sit down and and just say say some words about what I've been seeing because I I think people are still freaked out too much and and they're they're they've lost all sense of optimism for covid like they're, they're still in this pessimistic state where they're you know they don't want to see any events they don't want to see any gatherings they don't want to see any meets happening until everybody's vaccinated or everybody doesn't have covid or or covid is completely eradicated from the world or something or other you know whatever and i look at this and i'm just wondering you know when did we lose our sense of optimism about this I think this was I think this was good news. I honestly felt like this was good news like you know we're we're heading in the right direction seeing all these states lift their mass requirements lift their capacity requirements this is good news. I'm seeing it as good news because it means that the governors of these states are looking at numbers getting numbers that are promising and they're seeing that well we are on a right path to actually beating the virus and we've returned to our normal life. So they're going to lift up their mask requirements. Now, if you still want to wear a mask, if you still feel unsafe in attending places and you still feel safer socially distancing, by all means do so. But that doesn't mean you have to. I mean, when when this when COVID-19 first came around to this side of the country, I didn't wait for a mask mandate to tell me to put something on. I started wearing a, a neck gaiter on my neck and around my face while I was going around to all these places with nobody wearing masks. And again, that wasn't that wasn't the, the governor of Maryland or the governor of Virginia telling me to put that on. That was me telling myself, put this on. You know, whether whether or not they have it or not is irrelevant. Put this on. And now I'm seeing more and more people actually just going about their daily life without a mask or without socially distancing. Not very many in like stores and restaurants, but like in, in other workplaces, I'm just seeing people just moving about. They're, they're not enforcing masks in their workplaces. They're just moving about with no mask and no social distancing, you know, like normal. And I'm like, well, something's got to be moving in the right direction for us to, you know, loosen up a bit. But yeah, in the furry community, they, in the they furry look community, at the numbers and assume that okay, because are we looking at the plateau. numbers? Though? Are we the, looking at the numbers? The governor, well, or are we looking at the numbers, or are we having somebody spoon feed us the numbers? I'm looking at the direct numbers, the raw data. I don't know about you, and I don't know about our, our, our of our viewers, 
but I'm seeing the raw data, and the raw data shows that we're that we're moving in a good direction. Despite the spike in the very beginning of the year, we're moving in a good direction. I don't know how long we can keep this momentum, but it's good. It's a good momentum. And I am so happy to see it. And I'm and I'm I am optimistic that we can keep this momentum going with you know three vaccines out there, people getting the uh, the vaccine in their arms. You know, that's good signs. This is all good signs. Why should we not be optimistic about all of this despite what we're seeing? I think people are optimistic. However, they're cautiously optimistic because we've dinned out, we were down this path before last year, and then numbers went back up because people, because things opened back up too soon. People thought, okay, numbers are going down. Let's open things back up. What happens? You have a surge. Now, there's reasons for that, and we won't get into that, but there's reasons for that. And so the fear of many people, especially public health experts, is you're telling people, don't you don't have to wear masks anymore you don't have to social distance because numbers are going down and vaccines are readily available well hmm. we saw what happened and by the way not everybody can get a vaccine not everybody is a lot not every state is allowing people regular people to get them they're prioritizing certain groups hmm. and more times than not those groups are the elderly they're not middle-aged folk they're not people of our generation so you're telling people then Okay, you don't have to social distance. You don't have to wear a mask. A lot of people don't want to wear masks. You can tell people, you can say that it should be a person's individual preference to wear a mask, and that's mm -hmm. fine. I guarantee you, a lot of people either A, ha didn't wear a mask to begin with, or B, they're only wearing masks because the government told them to do so. And when you tell them they don't have to, they're not going to do it. There's a small subsection who wear masks because they realize, okay, this is going to not only protect me, but protect vulnerable people. Now, those people will still wear masks, but a lot of the population probably won't, unless the unless they're going out into a store that says, okay, you're going to have to wear a mask. Otherwise, they won't do it. And so when people see that, they get nervous because, well, even though we have vaccines and all of that, Again, not everybody can get one. And also, there's this fear of another surge. And we'll be right back where we were back at, at back in the beginning of January. And that's what a lot of people in public health experts fear. Now, if you had told me, now, if things were different and you had told me, okay, half the population had been vaccinated, okay, then I'd say, you know what, let's open up slowly. Because at that point, why not? Let's get back to normal. We're at 10%. 10%. We haven't even touched the general population. We're still on, most states are still on the elderly. You can't open too fast. And that's what a lot of public health experts fear. I don't know why some of these states open. I have a theory why. I'm not going to get into that on this show, on this podcast. That's not for here. That's a conversation between you and me, and you probably know where I'm going with that. But I will say that if a state is going to open, Maryland has probably done it the best because at the very least, the governor here has said, you can get, you can have 50% occupancy and um, these venues and stadiums, and you can have, you know, total occupancy at these restaurants, but you still have to wear a mask. You still have to social distance. That's what he said. If a state is going to do that, that's probably the best best of both worlds at this point but bringing it back to conventions i th i think a lot of furries are optimistic it's just a more cautious cautiously optimistic tone that they are presenting because they don't want to get them get themselves hyped up only to be let down nor do they want to be depressed and then by the time it's like, oh, hey, cons are happening. It's like, uh, I'm not happy enough. So it's like, it, it's sort of a cautiously optimistic tone. So uh, you mentioned the, the vaccine and you've mentioned the effort that is being undertaken to, um, to vaccinate people. Um, mm -hmm. I want to bring... I want to bring two things to the table, one of which is a Bloomberg article from March 5th 
that says that uh, the U.S. has vaccinated half of its seniors. It says more than half of Americans 65 years old and over have gotten a COVID-19 vaccination. But the lingering hesitancy means inoculating the country's most vulnerable age group is about to get much harder. And that is very true. Um, going further into this uh, into this article, it does say that uh, that second half that isn't vaccinated yet, uh, they are they are the people that either um, don't trust the they're they're not sure about the vaccine. They only would either get one if it's mandated by the state, or they're they're refusing the vaccine altogether. That's that other half. But it's a good sign that to see that our most vulnerable age group from COVID, the, the, the age group that actually has the most uh, fatalities from COVID is, you know, over half of it is already vaccinated. That's a good sign. That to me is a good sign. And again, it is that's good another sign. good sign that, um, that I'm looking at and seeing that, okay, things are getting better. Um, another thing I want to bring back is, of course, uh, President Biden's announcement that uh, mm -hmm. by May we should have a, a supply of vaccines available so that any American adult that wants a vaccine can get one. Now, this is yet to, you know, like I said, I don't have a crystal ball. So I can't say for certain if he's right or wrong on this. But again, that's that's more promise. That's more promise with three vaccines and possibly more on the way. It's pos It's quite possible that w that could be very true, that anybody that wants a COVID vaccine would probably be able to get one by May or, or by the summer. You know, the Americans will be able to be vaccinated in, you know, high numbers to be able to, like, boost the herd immunity uh, quotient and, and also bring down the R0 number. And let me just say about the R0 number, um, if, if nobody's ever heard of the R0 number, there's a reason for that. And, um, and you, can, you can just Google this, um, R0 COVID. And, um, and you get a few articles, but, um, but it's uh, R0, actually. It's, it's R0. Um, but the R not quotient means um, it basically tells people how how many people get infected from one person. So if it's over one, that's a bad sign. That means that you know for every one person, if one person's getting infected with COVID, if it's below one, it's um, it means that the COVID vac or COVID nineteen is not spreading fast enough to actually catch people um, or get people sick. Like it's, it's kind of stopping with the people that are already uh, infected and then it just fizzles out. Um, and that means that the disease is on its way to be, it's on a decline. Um, I think the last time I checked, it was a, uh, it was about uh, sometime in January that I checked the R not rate, and uh, it was, it had, it was like 0.9 or below for like nine states. There were like nine states that were, um, that had an R not of 0.9 or below, and mm. and that was also a good sign. I I I was looking at that and it's like, well, with more vaccines out there and more people getting vaccinated than can actually catch COVID, that means that, you know, that R0 number will actually go down in more states. And I want to also say something about numbers, because like I said, I'm looking at the data all the time about COVID and we get the data all the time on CNN. We have that ticker that shows the number of cases on, on in the United States, number of people infected, uh, number of deaths. And these are big numbers. But the R0 number is never a big number. Or at least if it's a big, huge number, fuck huge number, like, oh, the R0 number is 5,000, then we're all dead. We are all catching 
uh, COVID-19 if the, if the R not number is that huge. And then we're catching it again and again and again. The, 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 the nightmare does not end with an R not of like 5,000. But no, it's like 1, 1. 1.1, 1. 1.9, 1.05. And people are afraid of these numbers because they're small. But when they see numbers like uh, 500,000 deaths, uh, 3 million cases, 5 million cases, people get freaked out by big numbers. It's just a matter of our, in, of our intellectual psyche, of, of trying to actually con conceptualize these numbers. People can easily conceptualize small numbers, like even, even 0.9. They can conceptualize that in their head. But millions, hundreds of thousands, no. No. You have no reason to conceptualize these numbers in your head. So you don't know what these numbers are like. So when they show these numbers at you, they, are, they scare you. And that's the point. That's why I want everybody to look at the data themselves and make a decision themselves as to what is going on with your, you know, what's happening outside your house. You know, look at the data for yourself. Don't have it be spoon fed to you. That's where a lot of this, a lot of this outrage on Megaplex is happening. It's partly because a lot of people do not understand contracts and how contracts work and what's going on in Florida. But a lot of people are still freaked out by big ass numbers. And they don't, they don't quite understand the big ass numbers all that well because they're designed to not be that conceivable. But nevertheless, I mean, I, I know that things, the numbers don't look that good. But I mean, seeing the data trends, I think we're in a good position. We're, we're, we have a good momentum. And that's why I'm saying, don't freak out about Megaplex or other cons that are opening up this year. Don't freak out. They're doing what's best for themselves. And they certainly don't want to announce this early that they're about to cancel. They're, they might have that in the cards. They might consider that if things get bad, you know, they have an out. If things go back to, you know, the us having to close down state by state, if we have to go back to lockdowns like we did last year, then they'll they have an out. They'll they'll probably look at the state. The state will probably you know bring back its coronavirus restrictions, and you know they have an out, and they they can cancel. And it probably won't be on them. Won't be too hard on them. I don't know how it was last year for a lot of these conventions that canceled, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of them um, still had to pay to get out of their contracts in 2020. Because again, these are multi-year contracts. It's not very easy to get out of multi-year contracts. And you can't just uh, predict that COVID's going to just happen one year and then be like, oh, oh I got to go. Bye. No, I mean, it's... So first of all, I'm not a contract lawyer. Okay, let's make that clear. I'm not a contract lawyer, but I'm just, you know, kind of guessing here. And, and also, you know, looking at the data, studying the data, I'm a, I study data for, you know, day in, day out. I looking at the data, I'm seeing good trends. I'm seeing good R not numbers. And I think that with three vaccines, and more supply on the horizon, more people getting the vaccine. I think that that gives me good confidence to say that, yeah, probably in the summer, we'll be in a good position. We'll be in a good position to start to get back to normal or as normal as we can be. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, the, I'm not one who is living my life in fear of this virus. And I'm also not one that needs the state to tell me what to do. Nobody needs the state to tell them what to do. Nobody needs some bureaucrat that we didn't even elect tell them what to do. Nobody. Well, I I disagree with that because you well, go ahead. You're assuming I talked enough anyway. You're assuming that one people are rational. They're not rational. There are a lot of stupid people in this country 
who do not understand this virus at all. They are of the opinion that, oh, it's just the flu. Oh, it's, it's, it'll be gone. It, it'll be gone by summer. And it didn't go away by summer. So you can't sit there and just allow people to be left to their own devices because that's how you get people killed. That's how people die because certain people cannot be trusted on their own to take care of themselves. That's why we have the government. That's why you have bureaucrats who you don't elect, but who know what the fuck they're talking about because they have degrees in this because they've done this year in and year out and they know what they're talking about. These public health experts generally know what they're talking about when they say all this stuff about, hey, you shouldn't open up too quickly. You're going to cause a second surge. Um, we don't have any experience with a pandemic. None of us were alive. Most of us weren't alive during the Spanish flu. Uh, but we know what happened because people kept journals and records. And a lot of people did some of the dumb stuff that people have done now. And a lot more died during that than they did from this. Um, those numbers you reference, mm -hmm. they're big and they're large. And yeah, they're scary. That's 500 and what, 30,000 of our fellow Americans who have died from this. That's scary. That's not right. Thousands yeah. at one time died a day. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Like, you can cite the R numbers all you want, but when I see and hear on the news that 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 died from a virus, I'm going to be freaked out. Because that thousand could probably be someone that I knew. It could be someone that I, it could be a family member one day. So people are right to be scared. They're right to look to government to lead the way in a crisis like this. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because you so, can't always yeah. trust people's personal intuition. Because you know what? If people weren't dumb and people were logical, I would totally agree with what you said, that you don't need people to step in and tell you how to think. But they aren't, unfortunately. And we live in a society that's very interconnected. Everybody knows everybody, quote unquote. And when someone else's problems and stupidity affect other people, that's when it becomes a problem. So um, I want to bring up a, uh, a quote from the great the late, great Carl Sagan, who said once in, in one of his books, he said, arguments from authority carry little weight. Authorities have made mistakes in the past. They will do so again in the future. Perhaps a better way to say it is that in science, there are no authorities. At most, there are experts. And I couldn't agree more. We have to, when we are trusting the government or we are trusting uh, health authorities, to tell us what to do. We trust them to tell us the truth. And you can't tell me that you trust the government now on COVID, but you don't trust them when they pass some uh, ridiculous bill full of pork on, in Congress. No, that makes no sense at all. And, and that's, that's my, that's, that's my, uh, my problem with all this is that I'm, I mean, I'm making decisions for myself. I'm not making decisions on behalf of the government or I make, I'm not making decisions on behalf of some health authority that I, that, you know, to me is completely faceless. I have no connection to them. And they of course have no, they have no accountability to me or the rest of the people. They just, they do what they do without any checks and balances. And they do basically what is asked of them by government. Um, and so I, I, I don't care about, you know, bureaucrats or government telling me, you know, when I can go outside or when I cannot go outside or what I can, what I have to wear or who I can see. It, I have to make those decisions myself and I have to take some responsibility for those decisions myself. In the same vein, that's what we're seeing in a lot of states. And, I, and like I said, Florida is not the only state that has lifted their mask mandates. Uh, recently, Texas, uh, Alabama, Texas, Mississippi, West Virginia, 
uh, Wyoming, all of these states, uh, they've they've also been lifting their mask mandates and their restrictions because again, they've been seeing the numbers and the numbers look good to them. They're in a we're in a good momentum. Not not to say that we can go straight back up and then force all of these states to go back to their mandates just to keep people safe. But when these mandates are lifted, it's not a matter of the state telling me what to do. Or the state at that point says, no, you know, we, we're not going to force you to do this, that, this, that, this, that for the sake of your safety. We're going to give that responsibility to you now. And if you want to wear a mask, if you want to social distance, if you want to go to these conventions, so be it. But you take on the risk yourself, not the state, you. And again, I don't trust I don't trust these arguments uh, to authority, these appeal to authorities, uh, because, again, these authorities, they don't they don't answer to us. They don't answer to us like our politicians should or, you know, our elected officials should. They answer to the elected officials and they give whatever they feel is prudent based on their data, their science, their observations. And it could be whatever they feel like is right, or it could be the actual God for, you know, God foreseen truth. But we don't know because they don't, they're, they're not, a, they don't hold themselves accountable to us. And so why do I have to follow them? Why do I have to hear them? Why do I have to give them the time of day when they do not feel accountable to us? And, uh, and that's where, you know, we're kind of like moving full circle because, you know, what will, at what point are we going to say, are we going to collectively say it is safe? What, what signals do we get? Herd immunity. Well, what signal, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not done. What signal will finally give us the all clear to go back to conventions and not, not rip conventions to shreds for actually hosting their event you said herd immunity and yes 70 percent 70 percent okay which will be achievable by early mid to late summer if not sooner and at that okay. point i would not have an issue with anyone saying okay let's go back to normal because i would because i would realize that you know what We've reached a point where it's herd immunity. It's time to go back to normal. We can host events. Okay. And you know and what? If someone want to wait until 2022, that's fine. Do you? But mm -hmm. until that point, I personally, unless, and as I've told people, unless a miracle happens and we knock this out in June, and until we reach that 70% threshold, I just wouldn't personally feel comfortable either hosting an event going or going to an event and it's, that's it's and, and that's fine you're taking responsibility for yourself and you're also taking responsibility for those around you and that's fine nothing wrong with that um but you said herd immunity might be reached by mid to late summer and Based that's by administration and, and 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 also i want to add on to that and say that herd immunity is not going to be the same all across America. Of course, states will be slower than the, than the average. States will be faster than the average. We don't we, know what Florida will be like in, right. uh, in August of this year because we're in March right now. We're in the third month of the year. I mean, Alaska we're, we're, might get herd immunity before anybody else, which is crazy to think because it's Alaska. There you go. And but like I said, it, it it's hard to say, you know, herd immune, when herd immunity will be. But at the same time, making plans to return to normalcy should not be a bad thing, especially now when we can we can comfortably look at the data Look at what our government leaders are doing. And I know that's an argument from, I know, I know. But we can look at it and see some optimism in this. 
we should take that optimism and continue to do what's right, but also be doing it because we are at a momentum where everything is moving in the right direction. Not just hound events and hound people for wanting to return to normal. I want to return to normal. I want to return to normalcy. I want to go back to conventions. And so I'm looking at this uh, uh, this statement with you know a good glimmer of optimism. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not chewing Megaplex out and saying, "Oh my God, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're going to kill thousands, millions of people. What are you thinking?" No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my head on my neck and I'm looking at it, looking at the data and saying, okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens in August, but you know, otherwise you do, you go right ahead. I'm, I'm keeping myself calm and sane throughout all this. It's sad that we have so many furries that aren't, but again, we need to just kind of shed ourselves from this herd mentality. We need to start looking at the data ourselves, looking at the news ourselves, asking the questions, and finding out for ourselves what's going on with our with our world outside for ourselves. And then we can look back to this and say, well, you know what? They're probably doing what's best for them. Let's just go, let's just see what happens, and hopefully all things go for the best. That's what I want to see. I want to see more people be optimistic about this than you know what I'm seeing. Uh, and I think we're we're almost out of time. Salas, do you want to add in some uh, some final words? Um, all I will say is that continue to um, wear your mask, um, mm -hmm. and be conscious of be conscious conscience <laughs> be conscious of others uh, who may not have the vaccination. If you are scheduled to get the vaccination, please get the vaccination. The sooner we reach herd immunity, the sooner we go back to our way of life. So that's all I have to say. On on a different tangent, don't be those assholes that jump the line for the vaccination. Shame on you. And you and everybody knows who I'm talking about. Everybody. Yes, yes, we all know who we're talking about. We'll get our. You'll get your turn in line, just like everybody else. Just put yourself in there and wait. No need to jump the line and, and jump ahead of, of some grandma that needs a vaccination now. Asshole. He knows who he is. He knows who he is. And, you know, he's not going to hear this podcast because he hates us. But, again, we're, we're, <laughs> one of those, we're one of those people that stays in his head red free. And it's a good feeling. <laughs> But anyway, this uh, we've run out the clock. Thank you very much for joining us on another exciting episode of Furry Frequencies. If you like what you hear, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also feel free to follow us on Twitter, at Furry Frequency, for uh, surveys, for shenanigans, and all kinds of other fun tweets. And um, we'll... See you here next week from This is Furry Frequency signing off with Lifty and Silox. Thank you again for joining us and you have a pleasant evening. <laughs>